Good afternoon, good morning, uh, depending on where you're located. This is uh, Rob Danielson. Uh, I'm Vice President of Sales and Business Development at Shop Socially. I want to thank you, first of all, for taking some time out of your day to attend today's webinar. Uh, very excited about today's webinar. We, uh, we've been doing this newer format where, whereby we uh, invite some merchants onto the calls. And uh, we're very fortunate today to have Jessica Klein. She's the Director of E-Commerce at Carol's Daughter. For those of you who don't know Carol's Daughter, they're located out in New York where Jessica lives. She's a 15-year veteran of online marketing and e-commerce, and she's been Director of E-Commerce at Carol's Daughter for a little bit over two years. Um, I guess uh, one of the questions we'd ask what her specialty is, and I think uh, she'd say that uh, one, she wears a million hats, and uh, she does a lot with a little. Uh, don't we all know that too well these days? Uh, but anyway, in talking with Jessica today, is going to be the co-founder and CEO of uh, Shop Socially, and then his name is Jay Rawat. Jay's a serial entrepreneur. He's done three successful startups prior to Shop Socially. He's also an angel investor in many startups and sits on several advisory boards. He has over 20 years of industry experience and has been awarded 17 technology patents. He's a frequent speaker at industry conferences and on social media and uh, entrepreneurship. <clears throat> and I would like to remind everybody that um, you are on mute and that uh, we are taking questions. You can simply uh, uh, write your question in on the right-hand side. You'll see in your little monitor there. And I will try to uh, answer those as we're going. Uh, if, it's if it's appropriate, if not, I will uh, answer the question uh, at the end of the uh, call. Also, uh, we do have a special discount both for Shop Socially as well as for Carol's Daughter. We'll be presenting those codes at the end of the presentation. Uh, I think that's it for the house cleaning. Um, but uh, without further ado, uh, by my stalling and my long-winded introduction, we've got another three or four people that have just logged in. So that's great. <laughs> um, Jay, I'd, I'd like to uh, turn it over to you now. Thanks, Rob. And welcome, everyone, again to the webinar today. Uh, we will start with a quick introduction to Shop Socially. Um, and then uh, I will hand it over to Jessica to, start to talk about Carol's daughter. Um, and she will share the social strategies that, that, that they're using at Carol's daughter very successfully. It's one of the, the, the most successful programs that we have seen. Um, so we are really delighted to have Jessica on this call today, on this webinar today. And uh, welcome, Jessica. Welcome, everyone. So a quick background to Shop Socially. We, we are a comprehensive social commerce platform consisting of a suite of social modules that retailers can embed on their e-commerce sites and their marketing campaigns to increase customer engagement, sales conversion, and word of mouth amplification. We are a little over three years old now and uh, already working with uh, about 150 plus customers now ranging from some of the biggest brands um, as well. And what differentiates us uh, really against other social strategies is really a focus to help drive ROI from social. Along the way, we have won several awards and honors as well, uh, including two top startup recognitions. And uh, we were featured by Facebook in a case study as well um, due to the success that we are seeing from our social programs. So now before I hand it over to Jessica, I would like to get a quick idea of the audience breakup today. So in a moment, you will see a poll appear on your screen. Uh, we'd like to understand what your primary function is at your work. Are you the e-commerce worker bee with, who is driving in the sales and conversions and revenue, social media marketing specialist, which is kind of the middle bird over here? Are you the boss making all the decisions? Or are you the geek I implement or other? So let me start the poll. So it would be great if you can answer this. I will have it up for about 20 seconds, 30 seconds or so. Okay. I love the way the numbers come in and change so quickly. <laughs> I know. All right. Looks like we've got pretty much everyone has voted now. So I am going to wait for another two seconds and close the vote. Okay, and let me share the results. 
So that's our audience composition today. Um, we have 33%. That's the highest number of managers here. Uh, social media marketing specialists, e-commerce worker bees, some tech tech folks, and um, some others as well. All right. So with that, let me hide the poll again. So you can see my screen. By the way, if you chose number two. And if you have not teach, tweeted about the webinar yet, the vote will be disqualified. All right, Jessica. Um, before I hand it over to you, a you know quick funny anecdote. When when we sent out the invites for this webinar, we got a response from a person who is uh, based in UK, and she wrote back saying, you know, I, I, you know, you know that you completely just spun me out, because my mom's name is Carol. And I had not heard of Carol's daughter brand before, so seeing this webinar on Carol's daughter was just weird. You know, so maybe maybe you can start out by telling us about the how how this name came about and tell us a little bit more about Carol's daughter. Sure, um, we we do get that a lot. So um, thank you everybody for joining today. And yes, I can absolutely share Carol's daughter's story and how we came to be and what we are doing today. So Carol's Daughter was founded by Lisa Price, whose mother is Carol, 20 years ago. She started actually out of her home in Brooklyn uh, making body uh, and fragrance products starting for her friends and she moved on to flea markets and soon it became the large company that we are today. And we currently are available on our own stores and site and then we're also available through Sephora, Macy's, Ulta. Uh, we even have a presence on HSN, and Lisa does all our shows there. If you ever get a chance to catch her, she's fabulous. And we really are founded on the same, or the principle we were founded on is the principle that we run on today, which is that natural ingredients made with love, that is one of our taglines, come from the heart, will always prevail in the marketplace. So uh, let's move on, and uh, uh, Jessica has some has some key considerations that retailers typically have to think about uh, as, as we when we talk to them about their social media programs. Um, you know, first and foremost is ROI, which has been hard to come by for social media, and it's really been quite elusive. Uh, with, with all the promise that social media showed earlier on, I think I think most retailers have had trouble getting. Um, incremental revenue from social, so it would be great uh, to see that you can uh, share some share some success stories there. Uh, then, how much budget should you be allocating? The resources that are required. Uh, what are the key objectives you want to fulfill? Does it match with your brand image, vendor selection, etc.? Are these the same decision criteria that you had to go through uh, as well? Anything yes, that you want definitely. To add? Um, yeah, I mean, these are always considerations in just about everything we do with the top three ROI budget resources required being the first drivers of all decisions that we make when it comes to what we do both online and offline. We're a small company with a small team with a small budget, so we really are careful about um, where we go, which is not to say we are risk averse. Um, we are also open to trying new technologies, and you have to be today. But we do always consider um, everything on this list and everything that we do. Cool. And if those criteria weren't hard enough to figure out, there's an eye chart that's definitely going to make your head spin. And I bet that even Jessica, with her special skills of being able to do a lot with very little, can possibly do this all, right? <laughs> that's a lot, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and perhaps you don't have to do it all. You got uh, me there, so for sure. So with, with, with so many different uh, choices out there, uh, let me hand it over to you again, Jessica, to walk our audience through how you're navigating all of this with limited resources, yet generating such fantastic ROI. So over to you. OK, so we do take a two-pronged social strategy, right? So what is happening off our site, and then what is happening on carolsdaughter.com. So off-site, we always consider engagement, feedback, customer service, 
branding and PR. And then we do have the advantage of being on TV with HSN, and we do also live events in our stores. Um, all of that is great. It's all important, absolutely. But where we um, wanted to progress to and where Shop Socially came in is how to translate those, I'll call them traditional offsite, although in the social media space there really isn't anything traditional still yet at this point. And how do you translate that into the online world and on our site? Um, so we're using the Shop Socially tool as well as um, our own in-house resources to push on engagement, conversion, of course, and revenue driving. I mean, that's at the heart of everything that we do. Word of mouth amplification, rich profile acquisition, and deep insights. And we can get later on in the presentation as to what we mean by all those things. Awesome. So maybe let's start with the offsite strategy. Sure. OK, so um, maybe everyone else on the call today will agree as well. Uh, Facebook, just for being around as one of the oldest social media types, is our strongest asset. We actually have over 900,000 uh, fans on Facebook, which we are very proud of. And almost all of those were acquired organically. And when I say organically, I mean versus paid methods of acquiring. Uh, acquiring fans, I by no means mean to imply that they just happen by accident. We do actively work to acquire those fans on a constant basis. Um, these fans are highly engaged. So uh, this chart comes from Stylophane. I don't know if you're familiar with them, but they are an aggregator of all social media. And we are actually the number one top engaged brand in the beauty industry. So looking up against these mass brands such as Maybelline, CoverGirl, etc., we are still getting the most activity on our Facebook page. That's, that's, just, that's amazing. I mean, I, it's highly impressive how you acquired these many fans without spending a lot of money on ads, etc. But I, I guess that's, all, that's also the reason why you have such high engagement rate because these fans are genuine fans. They're not people who just clicked on the like button. Um, for no reason, right? That's exactly right. Exactly. Awesome. Okay. Um, let's continue. Okay. Okay. So engagement is great, right? Um, it's great to talk about, but having a lot of fans and having even an engaged audience is not necessarily translating into driving traffic. And in fact, it's getting harder and harder to do with Facebook these days because they, um, of course, like everyone else, uh, you know, want you to uh, pay as marketers to drive that traffic. So we have to get a little creative um, in what we do. So we are still in the philosophy of we don't want to have to pay for a like. We're growing at a fast pace there. That's not what we're trying to spend our money on. However, we are looking at ways to creatively get traffic from Facebook to our site. So one of these things we're actively doing right now are uh, display advertising. We are doing that currently in the right rail, and that's a sample ad that you see on the slide here. And we are actually launching later this month and doing the sponsored posts that come in through the news feed. Um, and here's some numbers about what we're doing right now. So we definitely get reach this, we get anywhere from one to three million impressions each month. We're getting some really nice numbers on both the click-throughs and the impression to order rates. And we are able to do this all on a CPA basis. So we are only paying for the customers who come in and actually convert to a purchase. Cool. Cool. But as you said, I think Facebook is a public company now, so they are trying to figure out ways to make money. I'd be curious to know from our audience as well, if they are running any ads on Facebook and they are seeing any success, so maybe let's do a quick uh, poll again with the audience to see um, if they are running any Facebook ads and what their experience has been. Okay, and I will have it run for another 10 seconds or so. All right, so I'm going to close the poll now. 
and share the results. Wow. Interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> Very interesting. <right? laughs> um, but uh, that's not so, that's not very uh, uncommon, though. I think it matches up with what we have heard as well. Uh, very few uh, retailers, especially, have been able to get ads that are ROI positive. You know, you've seen a lot of brand ads on Facebook, um, but we have, you know, very few people have actually seen ROI positive ads. And what you're saying is that the retargeting ads seem to be working for you, and you're paying them on CTA basis, so that that works. Uh, yeah, and I, I should add that you know we've been doing those. I'm going to say about six months now. So we were in a very similar boat to everybody else prior to that, and we had even considered you know not doing them at all. But when we were able to get um, the retargeting going and the CPA uh, method going, it really then became a question of positive ROI. So it was cool. positive from there on out. Okay. So we feel like we're in a good place in Facebook, and so really now the next thing in our mind is Instagram. So Instagram, obviously, a newer channel. It is not necessarily proven yet as a commerce venture, but we're, 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 we're aiming to make it so. So it's not where Facebook is today. We have currently, um, actually, uh, we are now at 25K, so we just to show the rate of how we are growing. Um, from just yesterday when we were working on this uh, presentation today. We're now at 25. And we've acquired those 25,000 people in just about six months. And we're expecting to double that by the year, year's end. So how are we doing this? So we really, in all, in all of our social media and all of our growth through social media, we're really looking at the assets that we have and how to use them and keep the experience cyclical. So. One of our assets, of course, is Facebook. So one of the things we tried was promoting on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and you'll find a special code to use online. And just in doing that for uh, a short period, we were able to generate 300 orders just from that. Um, the other thing we've done is using our email list, which is another strong asset that we have. The image on the right is the email that we sent out. And we were able to get almost 3,000 new followers on Instagram just by sending out that email. That, wow. was a, that was a win a hundred dollar gift card. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There's a question. Uh, there's a question here, Jessica. Um, are you using any other third-party tools to run these types of promotions? Nope. We are doing this all in-house. We do have a social media manager, and we work closely together to plan these programs. But we do it all ourselves. Great, thanks. That was actually from Tim, but uh, <laughs> thanks, Tim, for your question. <laughs> okay. So, Swap Socially has many different apps that you can use. Right now, we are currently using four. I know, Jay, what's the total number that you have available for? Oh. Uh, so we have about 16 uh, different apps um, uh, in, 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 on our platform. Okay. And uh, depending on what your objectives are, you can pick and choose and decide what works best for you. Yeah, so these are the four that we are currently using. So we are going to walk through exactly what we're doing with each of them. Got it. So this is now we are talking about the on-site social strategy. Um, okay. So. Um, the, the first app that Jessica mentioned uh, is Get a Fan. Now, as, as Jessica talked about earlier, it is very important to make sure that the fans that you're acquiring are real fans and not people who are clicking on the like button because they want to have a chance of winning a trip to Hawaii or something. Right? So those are not those are not true fans. So. Kara's daughter has clearly done a phenomenal job of acquiring these fans, and you can see that the engagement rate they have on those fans is the highest in their industry. But most retailers and brands, what they have been doing is they've been buying, spending a lot of money on Facebook, buying ads or running various promotions. Uh, what we realized was that they, they just completely missed out the one place that's perfect for finding the most qualified fans for free. And that's their own website, right? 
So people who are visiting your website are familiar with your brand. They are interested in the kind of products you sell. They are the, they are the perfect candidates to convert to fans. So what, this is what Get a Fan does. It helps you acquire genuine Facebook fans. Uh, it also helps you acquire email subscribers, as you will see. Uh, these fans then go on to convert at a much higher rate, so it increases sales. Uh, all the like activity has proven to improve their SEO rank, plus it generates word of mouth social virality. So that's uh, you know, just a quick overview of Get a Fan. I'll hand it over to Jessica to show you a flow of exactly how this works on their site. Sure, and I'll just add one more point to that list too, is that not only does it help with your fan growth, but it is increasing your fan growth of people who are interested in e-commerce. So for brands like ours that are multi-channel, we of course have lots of people who fan us who only shop at Macy's or only shop at HSN. And hey, that's great, we love those people too. But the mix of our fan base is now skewing more and more towards online shoppers through tools such as this. Okay, point. so um, before we get into the Get a Fan tool, so I would just let everyone know that all of this stuff is very easy for us to implement. So Shop 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 Social, excuse me, has uh, made it very easy for marketers to get these widgets on their site, and we were able to do it in a matter of days. The first one we did implement was Get a Fan, and this. Uh, next couple of slides will show you how it works. So everybody can see. Oh, already on the next slide. Okay. So the pink widget that you saw on the previous slide slides out, and it allows people to simply click the like button. So liking somebody is always, I would say, the lowest. Uh, level in terms of engagement, right? It's very easy to click like. So the customers are then rewarded with a coupon code. Okay. And we started with a 10% off coupon code. And that is something that we have tested it's from, as from a promo itself. We have tested that promo um, across all different media, so that was where we actually started the program with. Obviously, for different different stores or different audiences, the promo code can vary. Okay. After the user gets served up the promo code, they also have the opportunity to email that code to themselves, and while they are doing so, they are have the ability to sign up for our email newsletter. Okay, so here are the results. Almost two and a half percent of the people who visited our website were converted to Facebook fans. First step one, clicking that like button. Of those people, almost 33 percent then converted into a purchase. And again, of the those people, almost 29% became email subscribers. And, and those numbers are pretty typical of what we see. I would say you are towards the higher end of the range that we normally see. Uh, but because the users never have to leave the site, they stay on the site, you're targeting the right um, set of users and they get the coupon in the context of e-commerce. What we see is the conversion rate for these users is, is really high. Uh, plus, you get all the email subscribers as well. Yep. And uh, we should also mention that the widget remembers the audience. So it actually comes out on its own first time you see it, but then it is not activated every time the customer returns to the site. Correct. Uh, so moving on to the next one um, that uh, Carol's daughter launched is um, a widget called Social Connect. And Social Connect is, you know, think about it as your next generation email acquisition strategy. Uh, the standard email acquisition that most retailers use is that you have um, an email acquisition, acquisition widget that shows up saying you can get 10% off 
uh, if you become an email subscriber. Uh, it, it works well, except the, the, the problem is that the users have to leave your site in order to check their email and get the code. Right? So what we realized was that uh, users have already given a lot of rich profile data, including their email address, to Facebook. So if you can simply get them to connect with your brand while they're on your site, you can get their uh, verified email address plus uh, you know the rich profile data more than just the email address you can get a lot more information about the users um, and when they do the so do the social connect with uh, your brand they are also generating word of mouth uh, endorsement for you so that's uh, helping with branding as well as new customer acquisition once again because these users never leave the site uh, you see an increase in sale uh, all the sharing activity helps with the SEO rank and you are able to identify loyal customers and influencers to all the analytics and insights that we provide. Uh, so let's uh, let's look at the flow for Social Connect. And let me just okay. interrupt real quick. Uh, there, there, we do have a couple quick questions. Larry has a Lawrence has a question regarding um, the email a addresses that we do collect and wants to know where they get uh, stored. And uh, I can answer that one actually, uh, Larry. So. Uh, we have the ability to uh, store those on our side. Uh, you have the ability as a merchant to uh, uh, download those uh, into your system and or to your email service provider. Um, we are integrated with some email service providers and uh, allow downloading uh, in a CSV format as well. And then another question for Jessica. Um, uh, this is from a Starling. And it says, our brand is an artisan men's grooming brand. Have you found that women or men, uh, our women are more likely to engage socially than men? Do you have any experience or thoughts on that, Jessica? That's a, that's a great question. So yes, all the data that I have um, read does show that women uh, have a higher propensity for social media. Pinterest actually being the number one that skews so heavily uh, towards women. Fortunately for us, our audience is women. So. I, that also could be contributing to why we are so successful in our social media thus far. Um, we don't actually carry any products for men. We do, of course, have men who shop us for the women in their lives. Or um, there are men, of course, who are able to and can use our products. We just don't specifically market to them. Uh, I was I was hoping to I was hoping to buy something using the discount code for Rob. Rob has really. <laughs> 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 we we won't tell. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, we, you know, actually, uh, not that uncommon question we get um, a lot in our customer service is uh, beard care. So for men who um, do take extra care for their beard, they often come to a site like ours because they know the ingredients are natural and, and good for them for something they're going to put on their face. So again, not a specific objective of our um, marketing, but we are we are happy to serve all. Right. And, and, and from our point of view, uh, working with other retailers, we have also seen that there is definitely a, a bias towards, towards towards female audience in terms of social networking and sharing and so on. But it's not it's not completely skewed though. Uh, or I would say if, the, if you look at the numbers across all of our customers, I would say it's around 55 to 45 female to male ratio. Across all your clients. Across all of our clients, yes. So those who do serve, those who do serve both males and females. I mean, in your case, of course, it's completely skewed towards females. Uh, but if you look at other brands that you work with, um, that's roughly the ratio that we see. Yeah, we'll actually have a slide later in the presentation that shows the makeup of our audience. Of your audience, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, Any thank more you. questions? Okay. I think we're good for now. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So social social connect. So. This actually works very similarly to how the Get a Fan works in terms of how it actually interacts on our site. So what we opted to do was to pause the Get a Fan, launch this, and we're actually still in testing mode right now. We've been using this for two and a half, three months or so. Evaluate both and um, see if we're going to use either or or a combination of the two, which is actually probably where we'll end up. So Social Connect allows us to get more data from our customers than the simple like, of course, all the information that Facebook passes to you. It also allows the customer to use word of mouth and referrals to get their friends to become our customers. We love that. Okay. So 
once they have uh, agreed to share, they opt in connecting with us on Facebook and it gives us access to all their information as well as their email address and they never have to leave our site and then upon completion of that they get a coupon. And we are testing right now with the same offer because we didn't want the offer to be an influence in performance for one way or the other. So we're still using that same 10% off. Okay, so in addition to getting this rich profile data, we also get their word of mouth endorsement. So I'm sure many of you know out there that peer-to-peer -peer endorsements that you really can't get any stronger than that. And the engagement rates of their friends is much higher than any paid placement that you can get out there. Okay, so the results here. So we're getting about 1.2% of our web visitors connecting through this app. Now, if you remember from the earlier slide, that's about half of what we were getting with the Get a Fan. Not surprising, of course, we are asking a lot more of our customers with this app. However, what we do get from those people is much richer and much more in-depth than what we were getting with the Simple Like. That's highly valuable to us. We're getting about two clicks back to our site from every share that we get. And then in addition to that, we're getting about the same conversion rate, about 30% of people who engage with the app, whether it is the initial sharer or their friends that they are sharing with, to come back and convert to a sale. Okay, so this was the slide that I was referencing earlier. So here's an example of some of the data we are getting back. So we're getting information on their age, information on how many uh, friends they have, so how influential are these people via Facebook. And there's that gender, so you can see, uh, I wasn't exaggerating, we are almost entirely a female-based audience. And then the uh, chart on the bottom is what other things are our, uh, are our fans, fans of. So it's very music heavy. And then some of the smaller blurbs are also TV. Now, this, this kind of information can be useful if you're planning to run any ads on Facebook and you want to target users based on their likes and interests. Because now you know what your uh, core audience, what are their likes and interests. And when you do the targeting on Facebook, you can use some of these uh, as targeting parameters. Yeah, and, and there are also lots of practical and more organic ways of using information too. So I've shared this with our social media. So even in posts, hey, we'll be sure to wish each of those artists a happy birthday on their birthdays in our engagement posts, for instance. So these are ways to kind of keep the interest of our um, audience members alive and with you know really little to no effort on our side. Oh, that's a great point. Yeah. OK. Uh, so the next slide is um, masked to hide the privacy of our, uh, these are real customers. And so this is the kind of information that we are getting on each and every one of the customers who connects to us via Social Connect. Uh, all of this information is very valuable to us, of course, their name, where they are, their birthday. We do have a birthday loyalty program um, on our site, so birthdays are always very valuable, not to mention just to understand our audience and their age is also very valuable. And I'm sorry, go ahead. Were you going to say something? No, I, go ahead. Keep going. Okay. No, I mean, that was, that was really, really it for her. Uh, no, the only thing that I was going to add was that the, the data can not only be used for uh, segmentation uh, in your marketing program, uh, the data can also be used by the shop social dashboard to target the audience when they come back to your, to your site. So when these users come back to your site, um, you can use all this data to show them targeted um, messaging and offers. OK, and then the next slide, uh, these, are, these are not real people on the other hand, but on the yeah. next slide gives you an idea of who you're audiences, how many friends they have, how influential are they in actually driving 
clicks and purchases. So there's lots of ways you can take this information too. Of course, just the first being how to understand it to rewarding these people who are actually your uh, best folks people. And what you've seen is about an 80-20 rule here that you will find that about 20% of your shoppers will drive 80% of referral traffic. Yep. Um, and again, I mean, as, as, as Jessica mentioned, these are not real people, but you can you can, you can see the example here. For example, Stacy has only about 600 friends, but has driven 41 sales from her friends so far. So 306 referrals and 41 sales. Whereas if you look at the bottom, Scott has over 1,000 friends, but has only generated 48 clicks and five sales. Right. So it's not just how many friends you have; it's whether those friends um, are influenced by your opinion, and do they respect your, uh, you know, tastes and your uh, opinions about that particular product category? Yeah, I think I I love that data when sharing with the merchants. It's uh, extremely powerful. Uh, Brian had a question uh, that I thought was appropriate at this time. So in the collection of that rich data, so when we're asking for access to that, asking for permissions for the birthday and, you know, where they live and their email address, et cetera, et cetera, uh, have you seen, Jay, that um, uh, there's a higher abandonment rate because you're asking for more information as opposed to just asking for the basic uh, engagement information? Uh, what you found is that how much information you ask doesn't have a, a big difference in conversion rate, on abandonment rate, right? So when you're asking for information, you might as well just ask for all the information that's relevant for your brand and the, the, the information that you want to collect for your customers. Uh, the fact that we ask for this information is what causes the abandonment rate to increase. As Jessica mentioned, the social connect rate is about half of what we see for get a fan because for get a fan, all you have to do is click the like button, right? And it's very easy. It's a single click action and that's it. Uh, with Social Connect, you have to go through a couple of steps and you know, Facebook will show up that window and saying that this brand, this merchant is asking all, for all this information and you have to accept that. Uh, but we're, we're actually quite surprised to see that the, the drop is only 50% compared to Get a Fan because Get a Fan is a single click action whereas this one is you know, multiple clicks. Uh, so, to answer the question, no, the ab abandonment rate is because of the additional screens, not necessarily what the screens are, what information is being asked. Yes, I'll just second that in by this and some other things that I've done, that it's that step of asking for the social connect and asking some information that triggers the abandonment, but not how many data points you're asking. I'm sure there is some break-off point beyond where we are, but it doesn't seem to make too much of a difference if you ask for three pieces of information versus five. Yeah, I don't have any. Uh, I don't have any scientific evidence to back this up. But my uh, <laughs> my questions to friends and family has always been: It seems like there's people that do it, and meaning they're more willing to accept and share that information, or they don't. They, it's one or the other. And yep. uh, so, if you add another line, or you ask for another piece of information or two, it doesn't seem to be a big uh, uh, stumbling block. So, anyway, but thanks for the question. I think we're good to go. Okay. All ready? So. Um, Let's move on to share a purchase, and I'll speed it up a little bit because we are. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> now. Um, so, so with share a purchase. Uh, this is actually how Shop Socially got started. Uh, the idea was to capture the excitement of the users at the point of purchase, uh, because when people buy something, they are in that mini moment of euphoria, having bought something exciting and new, and they like to tell their friends about it. So we thought, why don't, why don't we capture them at that right point of excitement uh, on the order confirmation page when they've just bought something and uh, give them an opportunity to share that with their friends. And they could even get rewarded for that. Uh, so from a, from a retailer's point of view, what's, what's happening is they're converting their shoppers into brand ambassadors who are now telling their friends that, hey, this is where I shop, this is what I'm buying. Of course, they're acquiring new customers through word of mouth recommendations, which is really the best form of customer acquisition. Uh, once again, it has SEO benefits because you're getting SEO friendly backlinks to the site. And with all the insights, you can identify who your loyal customers and influencers are, as we saw in the earlier slide. Uh, so let's uh, look at the flow for share approaches as well and see how Carol's daughter is doing it. Okay. So I would say this has been one of our uh, most successful 
apps that we have uh, installed on the site. We and it's probably one of the most straightforward as well. So it pretty much pops up immediately upon purchase. So exactly what you look see here. We do incentivize it to give people a reward for sharing. Uh, I would say it falls halfway in the spectrum between Get a Fan and Social Connect in terms of um, effort level and um, how willing our customers are willing to do it. Okay. So on what happens when they start engaging is a post actually goes onto their news feed. They're able to customize it with their own messaging as well. And then there are uh, several components to the blurb that goes up on their page. Jay, you want to talk about that a little bit? Oh, oh yeah, sure. So the, the, what you've done is we have made sure that these posts are really optimized for both social media as well as SEO. You know, no, 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 no one wants to read a long thesis or a product review on their, on their news feed. So these small bite-sized comments work really well for engagement. Uh, adding the image portion here, so the share blurb that you see, uh, number A, uh, that's the comment that the user is writing. Uh, and then the prompt for that is customizable, so you can make sure that you are eliciting the right, set, right kind of emotion from the users. So that's number one. Uh, the product title and the product image are pulled automatically from uh, their purchase information. Uh, the description, which is C here, is customizable, so you can decide what goes there. Uh, so this is your marketing message. This is your opportunity to, to tell uh, your shoppers' friends about your brand. And, uh, and finally, the, the URL, which is um, the title link, which if the friends click on it, that URL points directly to the product page. So these are uh, SEO-friendly URLs that link directly to the product page. So when the friends click on it, they don't land on the home page. They can go directly to the product page and buy the product as well. So that's how these posts are structured. OK, so let's talk results here. So about 10% of our customers are actually sharing their purchases, which is great. Again, we're getting about two clicks for every share that we get. So we one share, we get two clicks back. And then we're experiencing a 21% conversion. So that is all referral traffic, which, like I said, these are the kinds of things that I'm looking for. And then it's also generating thousands of word of mouth brand endorsements. So we are what, also, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just saying that what's uh, interesting to note here is that the users, when they share their purchase, they, they again go through the same uh, Facebook Connect steps that we showed for Social Connect where they are, again, uh, agreeing to give up information about their profile, and they're giving us the permission to post on their behalf. So again, it's the same set of steps. But here, you will see that the conversion rate of users who go through that process is almost 10%, which is almost eight times higher than Social Connect, because these are shoppers who have actually bought a product. right? So that, that clearly shows that people are excited about their purchases, and, and they're much more willing to share it, especially if they've already made a purchase and they are um, you know, thrilled with that. Yep. And we're going to be talking about um, in the next section what we do with all of these word of mouth brand endorsements. But I've actually made an effort to read them all, and we have not had one negative or even even a questionable post yet. I mean, these posts are posted by people who are generally excited or generally fans of the brand. So it's it's really great to read them. I know we're running a little, uh, little behind, guys, um, and we'll keep on moving. But uh, one other question was on SEO, so maybe when you talk about product stories and about the shared purchases, you can at least comment about how this benefits your SEO efforts. Um, sure, I will, I, will, I will talk about that as well. So uh, maybe we'll cover that at the end of the presentation. OK. So uh, on, the, on the product stories, as uh, Jessica mentioned, that all of these comments that the users are writing at the end of their purchase, they're all really positive comments. Many of these users are repeat, repeat shoppers, and they're endorsing the product, saying that I've been using it for a long time, and they, they work well, and so on. So what we thought was, wouldn't it be great for us to be able to capture all that user excitement, all that social buzz, and, and preserve it, instead of you know just pushing it out on the social media channels, where their friends will see it, but the lifetime of those posts is about 24 hours or so. 
So what we did was we captured all of these comments and created another another widget which can resurface these comments back on the product pages. Uh, so what it does is it adds social proof on those product pages. So you can see whether there are a lot of other shoppers buying this product and these are all the fantastic things that they are saying about it. It's, it's, it complements the reviews really well because reviews go into a lot of details about the products but these are more, again, small bite-sized comments that are very exciting uh, and it increases sales conversion. So let's see how that uh, is implemented on Carol's order. Okay, so these are implemented on the product page and actually right now we're in beta mode on this. We only have this on seven product pages right now. So um, you, when you land on the page, you get this little widget that pops up with the ability to click to see more if you choose. And again, these are aggregated from the comments that we get from share your purchase. And if you do click that more button, you get a screen that looks like this. You can also click that um, show all in the upper right and you'll see the pictures of all the people who have made comments and you can also click the more button to read them all. Like I said, I've read them all. I don't know if all of our customers have, but they're, some of them are really great and they're all, all positive. And we are in beta mode on this right now. We are really, I've only rolled it out just about two weeks ago. so. I guess stay tuned for webinar number two on the results of that. Just to reiterate, uh, uh, you said they're all positive, and, and that's typically because these are comments that are made at the time of purchase. So um, you know, that's great. A lot of people always have questions, you know, are they, um, can you filter them and, and can you edit them? And of course you can, but you don't need to because they're they're made at the time of purchase, and of course they're going to be positive comments. Why would you have bought it if, if you felt otherwise? But uh, So that's great. I'm glad to see that's working well for you. Yeah, that was, of course, my very first question is, you know, what can I do if there's negative um, comments? But it, it really has not come up yet. And, you know, sometimes there will be um, a question, you know, things like that, which I'm always also reading. But for the most part, I just think it's helpful for other customers to validate that, yes, other people are using this product, too. Correct. Fantastic. Um, all right, so let's continue. And uh, again, but what what we found is that many of these shoppers are repeat shoppers. They are they are loyal customers, and by giving them the opportunity in line in the context before they leave the site, giving them the opportunity to 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 write something positive about the brand while getting rewarded for it, that that works really well. Right. All right, so um, so let's uh, sum sum it up, uh, Jessica. Okay, just really quickly, just to summarize what we talked about here. So we're using currently four out of the 16 apps that Shop Socially offers, and we've been able to acquire fans, drive conversions, generate social insights, identify influencers, get great word of mouth and great feedback, and enhance our SEO rank. And to some of the numbers. So here's some of the metrics that we've seen. So through the Get a Fan app, we were able to get 26,000 new fans, um, and then 7,000 new subscribers. The Social Connect app is we're almost at 5,500, and again, that's a little over two months worth of data right there. We're working on um, 6.7 ROI metrics right now, and we've seen an 8% increase in revenue. And then the graph on the bottom just shows our overall brand growth since we started. So social media can deliver good ROI and, and revenue uplift just need to have the right strategy. Um, maybe I can I can talk a little bit about um, uh, this particular slide. So this is again something that uh, Carol's daughter has not launched as yet. Uh, we are we're in conversations with them, but I thought this is something that could be pretty exciting for the holiday season. Uh, because uh, and, and Jesse, correct me if I'm wrong, but you you run you run some of these photo contests and they've worked well for you, right? This is part of our Instagram strategy right now. Correct. So the idea here is that there are two points of excitement when users buy something. The first point of excitement is right after they complete their purchase. So that's where share a purchase comes in. The second point of excitement is when they receive the product. Right? I, I call it the styrofoam effect. You know, open the box and this you know, product comes out and you're excited about it. Um, and you use it and you're really happy. What this uh, share on mobile app does is it allows the the, the users to uh, allows you to capture the users at the second point of excitement where they can take a picture 
of themselves. For example, how you use the product in this case, and uh, and they can share it. Right. So again, these are real testimonials from the users. But instead of just sharing the pictures of the product they bought, they are now sharing their own pictures and saying this is how great the product is working out for them. And once again, we can aggregate all of these pictures and um, comments in, in, in a gallery view. And we can even add gamification so that you can say, hey, you know, tell your friends about it. And if they, if they like your new look, um, the one with the maximum number of likes will win something. Right. Um, so that's, uh, that's a new uh, app that we have launched uh, for the holiday season, which I think can be very effective. And uh, good news is that it does not require any integration at all. Uh, so for those of you who have already frozen your code and not able to add anything new to your website, uh, this could be a good way to um, uh, dip your toes and, and into what social can do for you. And now to summarize, uh, uh, again, uh, Shop Socially platform, as uh, we mentioned in the beginning, that Carol's daughter is using four of the apps that we have currently. Uh, this picture shows you all the different apps that we have right now. I'm not going to go into the details of these. Um, we will be sharing the presentation as well as the recording, so you should be able to see it later on. Uh, and uh, with that, uh, Jessica, do you have any other closing comments? Um, no, I don't think so. Just happy to answer any other questions if there are any. OK. Um, so Rob, maybe you can go back to the SEO question that uh, was asked earlier. Yeah, go ahead, Jay. You want to? Sure. So let me do that. Um, so on the SEO front, let me just show you a quick um, example here, which I think will sum it up better than I can describe it. So here's, While you're here is, can you, can you see my screen? Yes, we mm -hmm. can. Okay, perfect. So, so here's a, before, uh, a screenshot from Google blog from October of last year and then again from May of this year. And if you look at the highlighted com sentence here, back in October, Google was still saying that you can increase the SEO rank by making sure that you're increasing the high the, the, the backlinks from high quality sites. But if you look at the bottom one now, which is in May of this year, they've changed that line and they're saying you can improve the rank by creating high quality sites that users will want to use and share. That's your Google official blog in terms of how your SEO rank that's computed and what's important for your SEO rank, right? And I, you know, if you're, if you're interested, I can send you a link to this blog where you can see it yourself. But it's, it's, it's very clear that SEO uh, ranking is being affected more and more by all these social actions because they're much harder to gain. Uh, plus, what we found is it's, it's a phenomenal way to increase customer loyalty as well. Because what happens is when a customer visits your site and if they like your brand or if they share your content, the next time they're searching for a product um, that you sell, your results are likely to show up higher because Google is going to say, hey, wait a second, this person is engaged with this brand in the past. They, they like it or they share the content. For this person, I need to show Carol's daughter higher up in the results. So, so that's how SEO uh, is affected. If you're interested in learning more, uh, we can send you more information. In fact, we have done a webinar on social SEO a few weeks ago. And I'd be happy to send you a link to that. Great. Well, we're going to have to wrap this up, guys. We uh, uh, Again, we will make this uh, recording uh, of this webinar available to you. If you would like it, uh, please email us. Um, I think there's one more slide here as well, Jay. I want to thank all of you for taking some time. We're a few minutes over. There are a few questions that are lingering out here. We will answer those uh, and send those out via email. Um, and we can also send that along with the deck. Uh, I did mention a special offer both from us as well as for Carol's daughter. And uh, so there's a 20% off code for Carol's daughter effective through the month of October. And also for Shop Socially for those merchants um, that would in fact like to uh, get a year subscription for our services, uh, we are offering a uh, free month or an iPad mini. So you know the baker's dozen 13 months for the price of 12 or uh, an iPad mini your choice. But thanks. <laughs> So much, Jessica, for taking the time and sharing, you know, your thoughts and, and you know, data. Uh, you know, that's how all of us learn, and uh, I'm sure there's a lot of folks on here. I've already received some comments of, you know, saying very much uh, thank you and uh, for sharing. Uh, so appreciate your time and everybody else's. Um, again, uh, if you have any questions, there's some contact information on the screen in front of you, and this is also available uh, if you'd like it. Uh, 
uh, to be sent to you the presentation. Uh, have a great day and a wonderful week. Uh, thanks again for coming. We'll continue to have these webinars uh, each and every week. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. And thanks, guys. And you will see a couple of survey questions as we exit the webinar. Uh, we'll take you another 30 seconds. We'll really appreciate if you can answer those.